Welcome back. Did this season sneak up on you? I know it did for me. It seems like each year we try to get, or at least I promote, having our draft as close to the start of the regular season as possible. In my mind, that makes sense. That way, any injuries have already worked themselves out through preseason. We've got that full slate of four games that uh, some of the players will have actually played. And it just gives us a, a better opportunity to choose the players that will actually produce in the regular season. I will say, though, that this year it snuck up on me, and not only was I not prepared for the draft, but I wasn't really prepared for the regular season to get started. The draft, in my mind, was a bit of a blur. Um, there were a few things that I, I do remember. I'm happy with my number one choice. I feel good about being able to pick up the duo of Jaden Daniels and Terry McLaurin. That was something that I had targeted a, a while back, so I guess I got a couple of things right, but... What do you think? I know that it's always based on schedules. It has nothing to do with where we want the draft to end up. It's based on how we can get 10 guys available at the same time. But do you prefer it close to the season or a little bit of, uh, of buffer, maybe a week or two before that season starts? I know that uh, I may have asked for something I didn't actually want. Anyway, let's take a look at the first week out of the gate. Our scores, as we look at them quickly, our commish and AB, it's a little bit of a, a stumble out of the gate for both of them. AB was our only team under 100 points. Uh, and thankfully, when you score the second fewest points in any given week, it's always nice to play the guy with the fewest points. So commish ekes out, truly, ekes out a win there in, in week one. Uh, Fatty Fishlips, uh, also known as Princess Bun Bun, uh, formerly known as Light Rail Coyote, strong showing in week one, despite uh, the, the name change and the turmoil we know that brings. Uh, he came in strong, 161 points, and beats uh, little bro Joe. Now, Stankopotamus comes in, uh, obviously always full of confidence, no matter what the score says, no matter what the roster says, no matter what uh, the football field says, full of comp confidence, brimming every single season, has a little bit to back it up. Another strong showing here as he starts off this uh, year, gets uh, a win out of week one, and uh, starts to stake his claim on what I'm sure he will say will be another championship season. Now, I, I'm i not even going to pretend to to fully understand. I had to look up Skibbity Ohio Riz, and um, I looked it up and got the details on it. Still don't fully understand. Uh, I'm willing to bet neither does Aaron. Regardless, he came out strong against uh, our reigning champ, Augustus Gloop. Puts a, a good beat down on him for his first win of the season. And then we look at Jersey Birds and Poncho, uh, kind of the same thing. It was a close game. Both had decent showings, and yet Jersey Birds was able to, to sneak out that win. Nice job, week one. Let's look at week two. Man, Spankopotamus does it again. Comes out with another strong showing. Really, it, it was against Kamish, who did not have a, a strong showing. Uh, unfortunately, again, Second fewest points on a, on, a, on this particular week, so he uh, he goes to two and zero after two weeks. Uh, your commish falls to, to one and one after two weeks. We look down and Skibbity goes uh, another another win here, and unfortunately, uh, little bro Joe uh, stumbles again. Uh, second fewest uh, points here. Uh, I guess commish had third fewest points. Regardless, at that point, does it even matter? Probably not. Uh, Fatty Fishlip stumbled with the fewest. Uh, he was uh, the only one under 100 in week two. Maybe the turmoil of that name change. He might have liked Princess Bun Bun. Maybe Fatty Fishlips isn't doing him so many favors here. We'll have to see what uh, the girls come up with in future weeks to see if uh, that has any effect on his team's performance. But Jersey Bird's another strong showing. He remains undefeated through two weeks, 2-0. 
AB comes out hot out of the gate and, and in fact, uh, really wants to, apparently wants to forget week one. Second most points, hits 170, which is a nice, nice score on any given week, unless you're playing the guy like Puzzles, who actually scored 179 and keeps Poncho winless through two weeks. So let's take a look at our week two overreactions. Now, if we look back and remember, we'll just remember back. I won't do an actual fact check, although I'm going to tell you what happened. If we remember back to last season's week two overreactions, do you remember what they were? The first one was Han Hoffman, the trophy. He came out hot out of the gate. First two weeks, uh, at that point, 150 points a game, which was more than anybody else. And I said, overreaction, hand him the trophy. Guess what happened at the end of the year? I handed him the trophy. Second overreaction, Joe was going to end up in 10th place at the end of the season. Now, at the end of the regular season, guess where Joe ended up? 10th place. It was only because he fought and scrapped through the playoffs, the, the losers, I'm sorry, consolation ladder, that he was able to eke uh, a few spots up there and put older bro Donnie uh, in, into that uh, losing the, the, the last place at the end of the playoffs, at the end of the, the full season. So neither of those overreactions proved to be true overreactions. So how are we going to overreact this year? Well, I'm going to call uh, our champion again. I'm going to say Jersey Birds this year. Strong showing, second most points. We'll look at the points and, and the standings here in a minute, but second most points um, out, out of the, the first couple of weeks. And think about what that means. Josh Allen, they're calling it an MVP season, so let's see if he can continue that. Malik Neighbors, oh, a bright spot there on uh, the Giants roster. And he's doing it without his number one pick. He's doing it without CMC who is on IR. Now, what happens with all of these points if CMC comes back mid-season, and here Jersey Birds is already a front runner uh, in his division and in the league, and he gets CMC back? Is that an overreaction? Should we hand Ian the trophy now? We'll have to see how that plays out. Now, our other overreaction on the other end, the stumbling current reigning champion, Augustus Gloop9, really struggling this season. I don't know if he was distracted, if he wasn't prepared for the draft, or his heart's just not in it this year. I mean, he's got his second uh, trophy, so maybe he's just phoning it in. But based on what we've seen so far, I'm saying our champion doesn't make this year's playoffs. We'll have to see if those overreactions stand, if they carry through the rest of the season. Let's take a look at week three. Your commish finally showed up, instead of just barely scraping over 100 points, had strong showings from multiple, uh, team, multiple players on his team for uh, a score of 150, second highest of the, of the week, and uh, continues the slide for our former champion, now 0 and 3 through three weeks. Jersey Birds. Now I did have these overreactions prior to seeing week three, but week three just kind of continues the feeling that maybe that's not an overreaction. Maybe that's just the truth. Uh, he's uh, got a head of steam coming out of the gate. First three weeks, undefeated, takes down Skibbity, who still uh, put up a decent show, but it wasn't enough when you're going up against the guy who scores the most points on that week. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Poncho struggling again out of the gate, not scoring so well. In fact, we'll see it. Fewest points in the league. Uh, but here we have uh, Stankopotamus again. Uh, not not strong, but, but enough. And sometimes a, a good season comes down to not just blowing people out, uh, but being able to to get a win when your team struggles a little bit. So uh, we'll we'll see what he's able to do at the end of it. Uh, AB still coming on strong, putting week one behind him, now two and one. 
we'll see if uh, he he factors in the mix here at the end of the, in, end of the regular season. Now, Puzzles and Fatty Fish Lips. This is an interesting one because Puzzles drops to one and two, which is kind of surprising as we look at the standings here in just a minute. But Fatty Fish Lips, seeming to enjoy that name, gave himself his new little avatar. I don't know. I think it's time for a change up, uh, something that might rattle him just a little bit so that he doesn't just keep rolling with, uh, with that. So let's take a look at our standings quickly. Uh, no real surprise. We, we went through the standings or the scores for each of the weeks. And so everybody's muddling around there. Uh, obviously, with the th only three weeks in, no one's more than three weeks uh, or, or three games out. Yes, even uh, offensive poncho, offensive poncho, or offensive poncho. poncho. Mm, mostly just offensive this year, it looks like. Let's take a look at some statistics. And here I just want to call out one particular statistic, and I've got it sorted here by points scored. Notice Puzzles has the most points scored and yet is in seventh place. That's what happens when you just happen to play the other guy who's scoring a lot of points on any given week. And so here he is. In fact, the team ranked one above him, your commish, at six. 83 points fewer through three games. You realize that, th that that's like 27 points a game difference over just three weeks. And, and yet he's sitting there at number seven. So we'll have to see if puzzles, if that uh, the high scoring offense moves him up in the standings. We know last year, I believe it was last year. We won't fact check that. But Poncho had the most points in the league and didn't even make the playoffs. So we'll have to see how, how that rolls. But as you look through, no surprise that, uh, that, that both Jersey Birds and Skankopotamus sitting there at uh, the number two, number three spots for points scored and are undefeated. That, that seems to make a lot of good sense for us. So we'll see how the season shapes up. I appreciate you holding fast, giving me some patience for our recaps. Look forward to uh, weekly recaps and uh, a lot of probably nonsensical statistical shenanigans going forward. Enjoy week four.